This week's Torah portion of Chaye Sara, Avram is getting older and he realizes I need to find a spouse for my son Yitzchak in order for the future generations of the Jewish people to exist. So he tasks his loyal and righteous servant Eliezer and he says, please go out and find a proper mate for my, for my son Yitzchak. Do not get a woman from the land of Canaan, but go out where I'm originally from and find a proper spouse. So Eliezer says to him, okay, no problem, but one small problem. What happens if she decides... She doesn't want to follow me to an unknown person, to, to Isaac. Maybe Yitzchak, perhaps he could come with me or come part of the way or, or, or just travel with me so that they could see him and, and want to continue to come back. Avram says, under no circumstances is that possible. And it's explained the reason why Avram didn't want him to go there because Isaac was extremely holy after going through the, the binding of Isaac, that whole saga. And therefore, he said, this is the place where he needs to be and we shouldn't affect that at all. The question is asked is that, Avram, one second. Okay, plan A is find the spouse, bring her back, and they get married. Everything's kosher and looks good. But what hap- what's the plan B over here? What's, what would happen if she decides she doesn't want to come? Are we willing now to risk the future progenitors of the Jewish people, Yitzchak, and this is going to be Rebecca, just because you don't want Yitzchak to come meet her halfway or to bring her back? It doesn't seem like you're being, you're not compromising enough to, in order to accomplish the ultimate goal of the uh, continuing on the future of the Jewish people. The lesson we learn is very powerful, is that once Avram decided that the proper thing was that he should not go, almost that's against the Torah, this is not what God wants. We are un- At that point, Avram was unwavering in what would be the means in order to accomplish that goal. And the lesson we learn is that Ends do not justify the means. We have to do what's right within the confines of the Torah, and the results be him, that's up to God what he what he wants from it. Just to give you an example, you know, we know the concept of Lance, you know, Lance, Lance Armstrong, who was a, a, one of the greatest cyclists of all time. And he was able, through his success and his financial means, was able to create the, the Lance Armstrong Foundation, which eventually became the Livestrong Foundation raising millions of dollars. But what happened? It was found out later on that he was doping, that he was was cheating. But you may say, you know what? Okay, fine, you cheated. But look at the great good that came from it. Look at all the people that have been saved by it. And it's true, a lot of people have been saved by it. And there's been a great result at the end of the day. But what he did was wrong. The, The means in order to accomplish that was wrong. And the proof is in the pudding. He eventually was, um, in 2012, Nike dropped him, all the, all the sponsors dropped him, and he was stripped from all of his tour, seven Tour de France uh, victories, and he was banned from cycling for the rest of his life, which he, he did something wrong. Similarly, that's what it is. Even though you can look at, wow, I can save so much, I could do so much, if I just compromise and do the wrong thing, but it's for good, it's for a good purpose. Nevertheless, Abra, we see from Abram over here is that in, in Judaism, we follow the Torah. God tells us what to do, and the results are in his hands. Have a Shabbat Shalom and a wonderful week.